Hello everybody and you are very welcome to Successful Perspectives. Successful Perspectives of course is when we deep dive into the topic of leadership with one of the leaders from our very selective network boardroom by Amir. On this occasion I am delighted to be joined by Jerome Droch. Jerome is the CEO for Domestic Health and Health Services for International Markets at Cigna. Jerome, it's wonderful to have you on Successful Perspectives and you're very welcome. Great to see you. Now, I have had the pleasure of getting to know you in recent years. In, in fact, actually, if I go back many, many years, you probably won't remember this, but I was on a panel with you. One of the first panels I was on probably, I don't know, over 10 years ago, I'd say. And I was, always, I was always watching your career from having had that interaction with you and being very impressed with the type of leader, leader that you are. And now I have the benefit of picking your brains on the very topic of leadership. So what would you describe as the main tenets of your leadership philosophy? I would probably call four different attributes. The first one for me is really about the long-term strategic thinking. Uh, and I guess, you know, in my industry, you know, about health services and insurance services as well, it's really important to build long and sustainable businesses uh, with a strong runway for growth. That's really critical for us because we are not in an industry where we can achieve very short term growth and, and targets. So sustainability is really critical. So the long term strategic thinking is the first pillar that is really important for me. The second one is really execution, because you can have the best strategy, but if you don't execute well, you will never achieve your ambitious goal. So that's really important for me. And it's all about focus on one side, but also agility. Focus because I believe ultimately uh, you can only achieve strong targets if you focus enough on limited number of goals. And the second one about agility is just because I believe the world is moving fast, the environment is rapidly changing, and we need to make sure as leaders that we keep that kind of agility. So that's for and the second yeah, please. And, and, and I was just going to ask there, how, how do you, you know, as you mentioned there, you want to keep a sensible amount of, of goals or targets. How, how do you define which ones are the most important to you? For me, it's really the one that will make a, a long term difference to the strategy of the company and the impact we can have in the market and for the population we serve. So that's really, for me, the key attribute. So I will really look about the long term one where I can make a difference as a leader for the market holistically. And you were going to go on and, and mention your, your next tenant. Exactly. So the, the third tenant for me is really about talents. Uh, for me, it's really critical because, again, I mean, you can only go a long way if you have a strong team surrounding you. And again, you need to make sure you delegate enough, you empower them, you grow them, and you give them a lot of opportunities in their career because otherwise we'll never attract the right talent and that's really critical to achieve your goal. So for me as a leader, focusing on talent is really critical. And the last one for me is really about time management. Again, going back to the notion of focus, uh, we need to focus on the key topics, but also make sure we allocate enough time to those topics uh, to make sure we make a real difference for the business. Um, and it's very interesting when you think about it, how many real key decisions we take as a leader per day Probably not so many. If you take at least one of them every day, it's already making a massive difference to your company. Uh, and I guess, you know, we do a lot of things and sometimes we lose sign of, of sight of fact that, you know, ultimately um, doing a lot of emails and things like that doesn't add a lot of value. So it's rather important to make sure we focus enough our time and attention to the key decision that would make a critical difference. And maybe the other part for me of time management is really um, something I really apply every day is thinking is also working. So very often, you know, we forget that, you know, we need to step back and have enough time to think about the strategy rather than just filling all the agenda with meeting that probably will add less values and making sure we take the right decision. I love that thinking is also working. So how often do you get the chance to think about the philosophy of your own leadership and your leadership style? So it's really something I'm, I'm reflecting on a regular basis. Um, and I think the four pillars probably remain always consistent and the same, but the way to achieve them probably evolve over time. Uh, and, and just a couple of thinking on my side is 
The first is the world is moving faster and every cycle now of the economy is shorter than ever before. So agility is even more important than it was probably 10 years back. So again, for me, that is a strong evolution. Agility is becoming a critical skill set. Maybe it was less important, you know, 10 years ago. Access to information is also something that has changed a lot. We can today access to a lot of information. So I think the key question is probably less about accessing to information, but more the capacity to have a fast access to the right information that will add value to you as a leader. And that's probably more important today. So how do you structure your access to information to get well informed about something that will add value in your decision making process? So again, probably quite different from where we were, you know, many years back where access to information was a struggle. Um, the other topics for me is technology. Technology is really everywhere today. And the question is really for us as leaders, how do we leverage technology uh, to be even more successful uh, moving forward? And the last one for me would be really something that has changed a lot since the pandemic is the real way of working. And as we all know, we debated a lot uh, together as well about the way of working, the hybrid model, how do we make it more efficient? So again, for us as leaders, it has changed the way we do operate, the way we motivate the team, the way we empower them, the way we interact with our clients, uh, with, our, with all the you know, device partners as well. So it has really changed a lot. And I think again, it has forced us as leaders to readjust the way we work every single day. You, you've always struck me as someone, a, quite a thoughtful leader. And even with your answers here, I hear, you know, it's quite methodical and, and structured and, and there's a process. Have you always considered yourself a natural leader? You know, you're CEO of international markets for a, a huge company. Um, is would you have expected or yeah, would you have expected to to be in this position at this time in your career when you were perhaps going back, say, 20, 25 years ago? A very interesting question. Actually, I'm an engineer by background. So that's probably one of the reasons why I'm very structured in my approach. And it's very funny because in the last year when I was an engineer, I was even considering doing a specific training program, like a kind of MBA dedicated to build companies and you know, to be a real leader. So that was always my goal. Um, so hopefully I'm a natural leader and I'm leading many business across the world. Now for me, uh, to be recognized as a leader, first we need to be humble because you know, we can always learn from, from many other leaders. And, and for me, it's really uh, about um, what we do, what kind of value we create, and also the capacity to build strong teams. That, that's really important for me um, as a leader. And, and the key question is really what kind of leader uh, do we want to be? Because you can be a leader in very different ways. And for me, it's really about being an inspirational leader um, and also leading with very strong values. That's a very important attribute for me is applying the right values, whether it is fairness, whether it is loyalty, you know, all those kind of elements for me is really something um, critical. I would not be able to live uh, being a leader that don't apply, I mean, the value I want to live with every single day. And the last one is really, um, developing talented team because that's the only way to be successful. You cannot be successful on a standalone basis. A, a leader is making his success based on the, the talent that he has in his own team. Now, again, when I listen to the language you use in your, your answers, it's very much the, very much the language of, of modern leadership. And maybe this is an, an interesting topic to go into in, in a bit more detail in terms of how do you define or what's your take on the responsibility for the modern leader, right? In the past, it was very much you had a responsibility to shareholders to maximize the, the value to those shareholders. And of course, businesses need to be successful in order to sustain them, in order to, to continue to do hopefully good work in, in the market. But now it's the modern leadership kind of um, agenda is shifting to creating that positive culture, what positive impact you're having on society. Um, I know Cigna from our interactions is very big in, in how do you create, be a force for good in terms of mental health, in terms of physical health. Um, how do you see that narrative of the modern leader and what's required of the modern leader shifting? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. So first of all, in my view, I mean, we spend a lot of time every single day on our job. And the real limit between personal and professional life doesn't really exist anymore. So for me, the value I apply 
on my personal side, I would apply exactly the same on the business side. So there is no real difference. So for me, it starts with the values and the values is also, you know, what you want to basically um, let as a legacy for your next generation. So for me, going back to your question around, you know, what is the role of a leader? For me, it's really critical to have a positive impact on society just because that's what we all want to do for our children as well. And, and back to a point about Cigna, it's very interesting we're reflecting on, the, on this question and the sense of purpose we believe is probably the main attraction point uh, to attract many talent. Because today we see that more and more people are reflecting on uh, what's the real mission of any companies before joining it? What will be the real sense of purpose? And they will only you know, be willing to go the extra mile and do more if they truly believe in the mission of the company. So for us, that's really important. And as you mentioned, a Cigna, we are really, um, you know, in a position where we have a very strong mission, you know, improving the health and well-being of the people we serve is really critical. So whether it is on supporting people to have a better behaviors, whether it is on mental health support, on physical health support, I mean, that's really something that everybody at Cigna strive for. And really, they want to go above and beyond. And to this, I mean, that's really what helped us building many, many successes. Now, one last question before we move into our rapid fire section, Jerome. And um, you mentioned there that you, did, you, you have the same ethos in many ways in terms of applying a certain set of values to your work life, equally to your, your personal life. But this last question is, What's the best piece of career advice specifically for your career that you have received? We have a lot of rising stars that, that watch these videos and they're often curious and um, particularly from people who have, have made it to the top of these organizations. Um, what, what do you see as the most important piece of career advice that you'd share with them? Probably for me, the, the most important advice in my career was go abroad and you will never be the same. And that was a long way back. Um, so before becoming an expat, I've worked 20 years, uh, you know, in my, you know, I'm in my home country in France. And at that point in time, the chairman of the group I was working for told me that. He told me, go abroad and you will never be the same. And he was fully right because then I landed in 2011 in Dubai. And when you live in a new country, suddenly you're forced to learn very different things. First of all, you discover that you can achieve uh, different goals with different perspectives, something you've never even imagined before. So it forced you to be much more agile in terms of mindset and to learn and to be even more curious about the environment and how to achieve goals. And, and to be honest, I mean, living in this fabulous country in the UAE, for me, I've learned so much from the different culture, approaches, background. I mean, for me, it's really a fabulous journey. Uh, so that would be really my best advice for all the young leaders is go abroad, learn more, and you will never be the same. The only thing I would add is it applies not only to you, but it applies to your entire family. And that was for me is the only unknown. I never predicted that. But actually today, when I think about my family, I think we're all citizens of the world. And many of my children are working in different countries today. So I think it really changed not only yourself, but your entire life and environment as well. And it, it adds so much, as you say, to your family in terms of just how they think and how they approach problems and how creative they have to be. I think there's something about the UAE where it's a place with a, of, of unbridled ambition and it's a place where there is, there's always a creative solution to a problem. And, you know, I'm from Ireland. I, I love Ireland. When I go back there, I, I feel the difference. You know, I feel the difference in terms of how we approach problems between different, um, within different countries. And I, I could, I, I very much echo what you're, what you're saying there. Jerome, thank you very much for being on Successful Perspectives. As always, nice to see you and thanks for coming on and sharing your insights. Thank you, it was great speaking to you, Trevor, as always.